The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Is that a message? Okay. I sure don't understand it. Mr. Gilsleeve is a man who'd rather eat than sleep any day. Got any more toast, Bertie? Who was that? Some lady for your uncle. Dames. Who was it, Bertie? I don't know, except it wasn't Miss Ransom or Miss Goodwin. Well, someone knew. He didn't get in till pretty late last night. Here he comes now. Hi, Al. Oh, good morning, Leroy. You aren't thinking of going anywhere in that sweater, I trust. Sure, why not? Because it's filthy. Change it. Good morning, Marjorie. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Mr. Gilsleeve. Good afternoon, Anki. No, my dear. <laughs> Your lady friends have already been phoning you. Lady phoned? Who? I don't know, Mr. Gilsleeve, except it wasn't one of the regulars. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that expression, Bertie. She means it wasn't Mrs. Ransom or Miss Goodwin. Oh, did you tell her I was out, Bertie? No, sir, I told her you was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that might give people a bad impression, Bertie. If it was my secretary down at the office, for instance, she might... Well, it wouldn't be good for her morale. No, sir. <laughs> you want some practice, Miss Gilson? Yes, Bertie, I'm good and hungry. And don't forget some more toast, Bertie. I ain't forgotten, Leroy. Marjorie, I'd like to see the morning paper if you're through with it. Almost, Unky. Why, it was pretty late when you came in last night, Unc. How did you happen to be awake? I wasn't. Not till you tripped over something in the hall. <laughs> yes, I tripped over your football, my boy. I've told you not to leave that thing lying around where people can fall over it. Oh, sorry, Unc. Where'd you put it? I need it this morning. I put it where no one will ever trip over it again for some time. But, Unc... I've warned you often enough, my boy. Oh, gosh. Whenever he stays up late, this is the way. <laughs> Here's the paper, Unky. Look, I want to show you something. On the society page. I'm not interested in the society page. You will be. Listen to this. Hmm? Music lovers in Summerfield will have a rare treat next Saturday when the Wings of Song Opera Company makes a special benefit appearance here. Oh, let me see that. The event is being sponsored by the exclusive Summerfield Women's Club in conjunction with the Sponsors Committee of Other Socially Prominent Citizens. Box parties are already being planned, and the whole affair promises to be one of the top events of the season for the Summerfield elite. Tsu. What does elite mean, Unc? It means a bunch of stuffed shirts, my boy. <laughs> well, they can have their opera. But, Unc, you don't want to miss it. I'm evidently not socially prominent enough to be on the committee. That's no reason you shouldn't go and enjoy the music. I wouldn't enjoy it if I went. Opera in Summerfield can't possibly be any good. I don't see why not. It's a regular opera company. There are good opera companies and bad opera companies, my dear. Distinguish between them requires rare musical judgment. Now, who has selected this opera company? Mrs. Pettibone, the president of the Women's Club. She never heard an opera in her life. Now, if they'd seen fit to consult with me, but no! Oh, no! Mr. Gildersleeve isn't quite la da enough to be on any opera committee. Oh, mercy, no! <laughs> What's he all excited about? I'm perfectly calm, my boy. I'm a little disappointed, I'll admit. That there are people in Summerfield who think more of so-called ancestry than they do of real worth, that's all. I happen to believe that opera should be enjoyed by everybody, not simply by the favored few. I still don't see why you can't just buy a ticket. Because I'm not the kind of a person who likes to horn in where he isn't wanted. You mean just because you're not on the committee, you won't go to the opera? Oh, that has nothing whatever to do with it. The opera won't be any good, I'll tell you that. Some small-time company I never heard of. Any opera company that would come to Summerfield must have something to hide. <laughs> I got it, Mr. Gilsey. Mr. Gilsey, you have been. Yes, ma'am, he's been up, oh, about five or ten minutes. Oh, pretty. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I'll call him. Mr. Gilsey, I think it's the same lady. Yeah, 
Bertie, you don't have to tell people I'm asleep, and you don't have to tell them how long I've been up. Hello. Oh. Oh, yes, Mrs. Pettibone. Yes, I read about it in this morning's paper. Me? A sponsor? I'm pretty busy, Mrs. Pettibone. But of course, where opera is concerned, I'll be glad to help. <laughs> you bet. Any time at all. Not at all, Mrs. Pettibone. Thank you. Oh, solo mio. <laughs> da, 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 da. What a character. You children have to hurry and get out of here now. Mrs. Pettibone and Mrs. Bullard are coming over to consult me about the opera. I'll get right out, Unc. Uh, I could play outdoors if I knew where my football was. Uh, it's in the laundry hamper upstairs. Gee, thanks, Unc. I'll do the same for you sometime. Yes, yes. Oh, solo mio. Da, 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 da. Just sit down any place, ladies. Sofa, Mrs. Pettibone? This chair is very comfortable, thank you. Then I'll try the sofa. Fine, Mrs. Bullard. Shove over a little. <laughs> I can't tell you ladies how enthusiastic I am about this opera thing. I knew you would be. I said to Mrs. Bullard, I said, Mr. Gildersleeve is one man I know we can count on, I said. Didn't I say that, Mrs. Bullard? She certainly did, Mr. Gildersleeve. She sang your praises. She said, you're a man that knows and appreciates music. Well, I happen to have, uh, I've had a little musical training. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve sings, Mrs. Bullard. Did I tell you Mr. Gildersleeve sings? Oh, I've heard him from across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid sometimes I forget myself. That is, I forget what a big voice I have. You need a big voice in opera, of course. Mr. Gildersleeve, don't tell me you've sung opera. Well, I appeared in one or two productions at college. Uh, what opera is the company going to present? Well, that's up to the committee to decide. We'll want your advice on that, of course, as one of the sponsors. Oh, at your service, ladies. Which opera do you prefer, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, they're all good. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, think we can decide that later, Mrs. Bullard. There's another problem that we have to consult Mr. Gildersleeve about. Yes? Since this is for charity, we've uh, got to make it a success. Oh, it will be. If it is, it'll be due to the efforts of a handful of men like yourself, Mr. Gildersleeve. We're not asking many sponsors. Is that so? Oh, very few, Mr. Gildersleeve. But uh, your name is so well known. Well, everybody sees it on their water bill once a month. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how would it be if I sent out a little notice about the opera along with my December statements? I don't think that would be quite appropriate. Why not? Good way to sell tickets. Oh, we won't have any trouble selling tickets. People are going to be fighting for tickets. After all, Summerfield has never had an opera. I see. Um, how much are the tickets? Five dollars a piece. Uh, dollars a piece? <laughs> yes, you see our problem, Mr. Gildersleeve. The tickets are so ridiculously cheap that everybody will want to come. <laughs> Isn't it silly? <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> But we've thought of a way around it. All our sponsors are taking 15 tickets apiece. That's uh, $75 worth. But I only have a niece and nephew. I doubt if my nephew cares much for opera. Oh, no, no. You sell the tickets to your friends, Mr. Gildersleeve. Just your best friends. You see, that way we can keep the tickets in the hands of the desirable element. Oh, well, I'll be glad to call up a few people and... Uh... Of course. Mm. But uh, the sponsors take the tickets in advance. That'll be $75, Mr. Gildersleeve, and if you'll just write us out a check. Check? You mean now? Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble. Oh, no trouble. Only, uh... Yes? Nothing. <laughs> Let's see. Checkbook. 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 Where is it? Uh, make it out to Earl Lewis, Wings of Song Opera Company, Mr. Gildersleeve. I see. Earl Lewis, Wings of Song Opera Company. Where am I going to get rid of 15 tickets, I wonder? 75 and, uh-oh, hundreds. Uh-oh. 15 tickets. Do I know 15 people that like opera? Do I know 15 people with $5? <laughs> <laughs> Rock Martin P. Deliciously. Well, hello, Mr. 
I think. Gildersleeve? Well, howdy, P.B. How are things down at the waterworks? <laughs> Gosh, I haven't even thought about the waterworks. I've been so busy with the opera. Just dropped in to check up on these tickets I left with you. Oh, don't worry about those, Mr. Gildersleeve. I got them right here. <laughs> I put them in the cash drawer for safekeeping. But, but uh, have you sold any? Uh, no, Mr. Gildersleeve, I haven't. <laughs> uh, to tell you the truth, there doesn't seem to be much demand for them. Well, it's like anything else, Peavy. You have to create the demand. You have to sell them. I know, but just the same, I, I wonder if you haven't picked the wrong outlet here. Why? Well, in all the years I've been in the pharmacy business, I can't recall that anyone has ever come in here and asked for opera tickets. <laughs> People come in and ask for a lot of things. I had a woman come in and ask for a dozen and a half skate keys once. Never told me what she wanted them for. Skate keys at a drugstore? Why, that's ridiculous. Yes, it is. It was just by the merest chance that I happened to have them. <laughs> but as I say, I never had anybody ask for opera tickets. Of course, there hasn't been any opera. Yes. Well, you can't wait for people to ask you for them, Peavy. You've got to ask them. Oh, I do. Yeah. The reason you haven't sold any tickets is you haven't tried. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> if you ask me the reason I haven't sold any, it... well, I don't like to say this, but I wonder if you haven't set the price a little high, five dollars. I didn't set the price, Peavy. That's what they cost. I'm not making anything on this, you know. I know, but five dollars. That's ten dollars if you take the wife. And what man would go to an opera if it wasn't for his wife? <laughs> That's not the attitude, Peavy. You're not supposed to enjoy this. It's for charity. That's what I say. Uh, what charity? What's that? I say, what charity is it being given for? Oh, what? Oh, yes. Well, I don't know that that's been settled yet. But it'll be a, bur a worthy one, yes. Yeah, pardon me, just a moment, customer. Customer? Uh, don't forget about the tickets. Good morning, Mrs. Hornberg. Good morning, Mr. Peavy. Fine day. Yes, it is. Oh, is, the, is this gentleman ahead of me? Oh, no, no. Go right ahead. I'm just waiting. <laughs> don't forget, Peavy. What can I do for you, Mrs. Hornberg? I'd like some aspirin, please. Aspirin? Any particular brand? Well, which is best? Well, they're all monoacetic acid ester or salicylic acid. They're all what? They're all aspirin. <laughs> PB, the tickets. Keep your shirt on. You mean uh, there's no difference between any of them? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I think I'll just take this one. A very wise choice. That'll be ten cents and one cent for the governor. Uh, will there be anything else, Mrs. Hornbeck? Peavy. No, I, I think that's all, thank you. And the razor blade? <laughs> uh, shaving lotion? Uh, cod liver oil? Uh, no, thank you. Peavy. Uh, vitamin tablet? <laughs> we have a special on bath salts. Well, um, no, I, uh... You wouldn't want any tickets to the opera, would you? No, I think that's... Did you say opera tickets? Uh, just a suggestion. I didn't really think you would. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> There's your package, Mrs. Hornbeck. Thank you very much, and call again. <laughs> there, you see, Mr. Gillespie? Peavy, you take the cake. By George, you couldn't sell mittens at 60 below zero. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Give me back my tickets. I'll sell them myself. And we'll find out how the great Gildersleeve sells the tickets in just a moment. Mr. Lang, before you say anything about parquet margarine, do you generally have a big breakfast at your house? Well, we usually have a substantial breakfast. Most of my friends say breakfast at their house is such a hectic affair. Everybody sort of eats and runs. Yes, I expect that's true with a lot of people. But I think you'll find that a great many of our go-getting Americans have learned that they need the nourishment a hearty, hot breakfast provides. Well, I wish I could get that idea across in my home. Well, then I'd suggest that you make each breakfast as tempting as possible by serving hot breads or pancakes or, of course, the old standby toast. 
And to make any kind of bread you serve taste extra good, I'd recommend parquet margarine as the spread. Parquet is preferred by millions as a spread for bread because of its unmatched flavor. And it's one of the most nourishing foods you can serve. It's rich in food energy value, and it's fortified with important vitamin A. So get your family off to a right start at breakfast by serving delicious, nourishing parquet. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Mrs. Finley? Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve, Rock Martin P. Gildersleeve. You probably don't know me, Mrs. Finley, but I'm calling with regard to the forthcoming opera benefit of which you have undoubtedly heard and of which I have the uh, honor to be one of the sponsors. Your name has been given to me, Mrs. Finley, as one of the... Oh, you're a sponsor yourself. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Me too. <laughs> well, good luck. <laughs> Uncle Mort, what are the chances of somebody else getting at that phone? Not now, my dear. Give me another name from the book, Leroy. We haven't had much luck with the F's. You want to try the G's? I'll try anything. But, Uncle Mort, you've been on the phone for hours. The way it's going, I'll be on it for days. But I've got to do my homework. Well, go do it. Pick a name, Leroy. But I've got to call Francie. It's algebra. You're not going to do your algebra on my telephone. Well, how can I do it if I can't call Francie? Do it in your head. How does anybody else do it? Next name, Leroy? Flack, E.J. Summerfield 0859. Flack. Summerfield, 0859. Uh, uh, uh. Don't stand there making faces at me, Marjorie. Go do your... Uh, hello. <laughs> yes. Hello, Mrs. Uh, uh, hold the wire a minute, please. Leroy, what was that name? Flack. Huh? I think it was Flack. Maybe it was Flake. Or Fluke. Uh, yeah, okay. Hello, Mrs. Flack. Uh, this is Mr. Gildersleeve. Frock Martin Gildersleeve. You probably don't know me, Mrs. Flack, but I'm calling with regard to the forthcoming opera benefit, of which you've undoubtedly heard, and of which I have the uh, honor to be one of the sponsors. Your name has been given to me, Mrs. Fluke, is one... <laughs> oh, you too, huh? <laughs> Sorry to have bothered you. How can anybody sell opera tickets if everybody's going to be a sponsor? Doorbell, it's Judge Hooker. Oh, what does he want? Just when I'm... Wait a minute. Let the dear judge in, my dear. Let him come right in. Hello, Judge. Good afternoon, Marjorie. Horace, my old friend. Welcome to our humble abode. Take the judge's coat there, my dear. Horace, I'm certainly glad to see you. Well. Leroy, get out of that chair. Sit down, old fellow. Sit down. Well, if it's all the same to you, I'll stand up, Gilly. No, thank you, Marjorie. I won't take off my coat. Sit down. Stand up. Take off your coat. Roast to death. Suit yourself. <laughs> This is Liberty Hall here. We want to please you. Marjorie, how long has he been like this? Since birth, I guess. <laughs> Horace, my friend, how much money have you got on you? None of your business. Why? Horace, my friend, much as I esteem you, I've always felt that there's one facet of your education that's been woefully neglected, and that is music. What bush are you beating around now? And if there's one field of music in which you're particularly ignorant, it's opera. Now, I am so fortunate as to have in my possession here a few little tickets. If those are opera tickets. They are. And if you were thinking of selling me any. It was in the back of my mind. Well, I happen to be the chairman of the opera's committee on arrangements. <laughs> Horace, have you sold any of those tickets they stuck you with? To tell you the truth, Gildy, I've been so busy with all the committee work I haven't even tried. But I anticipate no particular difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> I just dropped in to tell you that owing to the many demands upon my time, I may be a little late to the Jolly Boys meeting tonight. Oh, I'd forgotten there was one. You're going, aren't you? Mm, I don't know. Well, if you do, ask him not to hold up the proceedings from me. Oh, uh, and since you mention it, you uh, might just take these opera tickets of mine and pass them around down there in case any of the members are cared to purchase You go sell them yourself, Horace. I've got my own tickets to get rid of. Huh. Yeah. Well, I may see you later, then, if you decide to go. Don't worry. I'll be going. Not gonna get down there ahead of me, the old goat. Floyd, <laughs> you're the most boys, boys. Let's be jolly boys, shall we? I'm just trying to make myself heard. That's all, Chief. Well, we heard you. 
I say we've got to get behind the opera, fellas. I say we should support it. Why? It's for charity, Floyd. Yeah, yeah, I know about charity. Give me another reason. Well, it's going to be an important function socially. Uh, I think if the Jolly Boys were to attend, it would give them a little class. A little class could ruin this club. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point there. Yeah. Well, there's another thing, too. This isn't just a club here. In a way, we're a musical organization. No, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, you wouldn't, maybe. But Floyd, you're a singer. Well, I, I can hold my own, I guess. You're as sound a tenor as I know. Gee, thanks, Commissioner. And the chief here. I don't know where you'd find a better bass. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> Of course, the judge ain't here, so we don't have to lie about him. <laughs> yeah, very good, Floyd. <laughs> so what I say, fellows, as music lovers and the only singing group in Summerfield that's worth a hoot, the Jolly Boys should not only go to the opera, they should attend in a body. How about it? He's got a point there. Yeah. Yeah, let's all go. That's the stuff, fellas. Now, I've been able to obtain a few choice tickets, which I happen to have here with me. Coincidence. Let's see... Each of us will want to take a wife or friend, I presume. Just a minute, Commish. How much are these tickets? Uh, how much are they? Yeah, how much? Uh, five dollars. Five dollars? Five dollars? Five dollars to take the wife to a lousy opera? <laughs> Ten dollars, Floyd. The tickets are five dollars apiece. You keep out of this, PB. Now, hold on. I'm for charity and all that, but fun is fun. Yeah. When I pay out ten bucks, I like to get a little something for my money. Lousy opera. <laughs> Have you ever been to the opera, Floyd? No, and it don't look like I'm going. Have you, Chief? Mm, no, I can't say that I have. Peavy? I told you, Mary Widow. Yeah. <laughs> Why, gentlemen, you've missed some of the greatest entertainment in the world. That ain't what I heard. Why, it's exciting. It's spectacular. People go miles to see it. Why, in the opera, Carmen alone, you know what you get? What? Bullfights, duels, parades. Love scenes, beautiful senoritas. Yeah? Yeah. And through it all, gorgeous melodies. Toreador, oh, Toreador, Toreador, Toreador. <laughs> what's the opera about, Commissioner? Uh, Carmen, what's it about? Yeah. Uh, oh, well, <clears throat> it's about this girl named Carmen, this beautiful senorita. She's Spanish, see, and she's very ooh-la-la. That's French. Well... <laughs> She's the French type, only she's Spanish. Oh. <laughs> so in comes this fellow who's in love with her. His name is Don somebody, and he's about six feet six. He comes marching in. Toreadoro, Toreadoro. You sang that. Yeah. <laughs> well, he no sooner arrives and start make loving. <laughs> well, who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> He no sooner arrives and starts making love to Carmen, who, believe me, fellas, is a dish, really. <laughs> and in comes another fella, Don somebody else. Right away, they're jealous. And they whip out their swords and go at it, hammer and tongs. Toreador, eh, Toreador. Is that the only song in the opera? <laughs> Let him tell the story, Floyd. Oh, hey. Floyd, don't betray your ignorance. Surely you heard... Vesti la juba... Yo ho ho, Pagliacci. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that's it, Chief. Why, I've heard that. Sure, and then there's Celeste Aida. Who's Aida? Friend of Carmen's. Oh. Celeste Aida. Da, 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 Carmen. Is that opera? No kidding? Certainly. Oh, and don't forget Martha. She another friend? I guess so. <laughs> Martha, Martha, I implore you, leave me not to pine and sigh. Say, hey, Chief, you know that, Why, don't you? I've got a record of that. Hey, say, hey, this sounds like a great show. Oh, it's even better when you see it. Bullfights, fellows, beautiful senoritas, a band of 50 pieces. Uh, Mr. Gillisleeve, are there any elephants? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, Peavy. It's got everything else. Now, I always like to see the elephant. Oh, well. Now, who wants tickets, fellas? How many? Chief? Uh, I'll bite, Commissioner. Give me two. That's the stuff. Two for the Chief. Peavy, how about you? Uh, give me one for now. I'll let you know about the other one later. Oh, great. One it is. Floyd, how about it? 
I still say ten bucks is too steep. Oh, come on, Floyd. Yes, Floyd, let's all go. Well, don't urge him if you don't want to. I just hate to think about what he's missing, that's all. All those gorgeous melodies. Some think the world was made for fun and frolic. And so do I. And so do I. Some like to fret and be all melancholic. To pine and sigh. To pine and sigh. Great. Come on, how about it, Floyd? Nope. But I, I like to spend my time in singing some joyful song. Some joyful song. <laughs> to set the world with laughter bravely ringing is far from wrong. Is far from wrong. Harkin, harkin, music fills the air. Harkin, harkin, joy is everywhere. Peninkily, peninkula, peninkily, peninkula. Joy is every... Floyd, I forgot to tell you about the biggest scene in the opera. What's that? That's where Carmen and her friend, these two beautiful senoritas, uh -huh. they get into a fight over this fellow. You yeah. know, Don, somebody? Yeah. And I tell you, it's really something to see. They bite, they scratch, they even start to tear each other's clothes off. Tear each other's... Yeah? Right before your very eyes. But there's no telling how it might end. Only the dancing girls come in and pull them apart. Dancing girls? You didn't tell me they had dancing girls. Oh, hundreds of them. I'll take two tickets. <laughs> Joy is everywhere. Peniculi, peniculi. The great Gildersleeve will be back in just a few moments. A little while ago, I had a few words to say about parquet margarine's fresh, delicate flavor, how it makes all kinds of bread taste so good. And I also pointed out how parquet margarine helps provide your family with fine, wholesome nourishment because it's so rich in food energy and fortified with important vitamin A. Now, another reason why parquet margarine is preferred by millions to any other spread is that it's so economical. Parquet's nourishing goodness and unmatched flavor can be enjoyed by your family for only about half the price of costly spreads. So why pay more? Just try Parquet Margarine once and see if you don't prefer it to any other brand. That's P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet Margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's just one week left in the Victory Bond Drive. The war is over, but the government needs money to bring our men home from overseas, to provide hospital care for the wounded, to support the wives and children of those who will never return. If the war was worth buying bonds for, surely these vital peacetime needs deserve our help, too. And remember, inflation is still a danger, and the bonds are the best defense against it. So if you haven't bought your victory bond yet, do it tomorrow. Will you? Good night, everybody. <laughs> Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. You good cooks know it's the seasoning that adds extra zest to foods. That's why there's been such a big swing to Kraft Salad Mustard for pepping up meals. You'll be delighted with the extra flavor tang Kraft Salad Mustard adds to meat, hot vegetable and cheese dishes, and to gravies, pickle relishes, and barbecue sauce. There's another variety, too, just a bit sharper, and oh so tasty on frankfurters and in sauce for fish. It's the Kraft Mustard with nippy horseradish added. Buy both delicious Kraft prepared mustards when you shop tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company.